Hello again, church family, and welcome back to my kitchen. It's been a very strange week yet again, especially with the very sad news that our church building, as with all church buildings across the country, is now closed. But I'm glad that we can still keep in touch like this. Um, and I must admit, the best advice I've heard, uh, you may have come across it too, I th think it came from the Church of England, um, is this to keep safe, keep connected, and keep praying. Um, I thought that was excellent advice, and really, in essence, that's my prayer for each one of you, that you would keep safe, um, protecting yourself and others, that you would keep connected uh, with us, like you are doing now, uh, but also with those around you, so you're not too isolated, and keep praying. We really do need to be praying for our nation and our world at this time of crisis. Uh, while I'm talking about praying, um, can I encourage you to be praying for our, pr our mission partners? Uh, our mission partners, as you will know, are scattered across the globe and they're all having to deal with this coronavirus in very different circumstances and they really need our prayers. Um, in particular, perhaps I should mention one, that's uh, Jenny and Ellie Fadili who are due, were due, to be with us right now. They, uh, in fact, Jenny made it across with some of the children to the UK um, Ellie didn't because one of their children, their visa didn't come through, so he stayed behind, hoping to join Jenny and the other children later. Sadly, then the coronavirus struck and they had that really hard decision to make as to where they should be based as a family. And they decided in the circumstances, I think very wisely, that they'd be better off if they were all at home in Tanzania. So sadly, they've gone home, um, but we are reassured they will return when this pandemic has cleared so that we can have updates from them on their work with YWAM, which we will very much look forward to. Well, what can you expect from this video that you're watching now? Well, um, it's not just me. Uh, I'm delighted to say more of the team are involved in this week's video and so in just a moment you're going to be zoomed to another house in Nailsey uh, where you can uh, hear from Trevor and Carol and then we're going to have some prayers towards the end led by Caroline. Uh, so we're going to look forward to that and I hope as you watch you will feel blessed this Lord's Day. So welcome to our kitchen and hello from us. Hello. We do hope that you're okay and thank you so much for joining us. Um, we wanted to say before we start that if there is anyone there that's feeling particularly that you've had a tough week or there's a worry or you're feeling isolated, mm -hmm. please do reach out and get in touch. The email that this came with, if you reply to that, someone uh, from the office team will forward that on to us so that we can just know what's going on with everyone. But we're really pleased that you can join us, even if it is very strange. Um, we're this morning going to be picking up on a teaching series that we've been doing together as church over the last few weeks. The series about the prodigal God, um, the story of the two sons, the runaway son and the stay at home son. And this week we're going to focus on the story from Luke 19 about Zacchaeus. Um, it's a very well-known story, but there's something about the story that really struck me this week when I was looking at it. And that's what I want to share about. But first of all, let's um, listen to Carol reading for us. OK, the passage today is from Luke 19 verses 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, 
Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So it's a great story, um, uh, but people sometimes make a mistake with this, to think that it's just about a small person, it's just a kid's story. You know, the sort of thing where you, you draw a nice picture. Here's one we made earlier. But I think that's a mistake. There's some really important things in here. Um, really, the story is in three scenes. So let's cut to scene one. So scene one. Zacchaeus is wealthy, but he's also hated. He's a collaborator with the occupying army and he extorts money from people, excess taxes. He's corrupt and people despise him. But he's heard about Jesus and he wants to see him. So he's, he's coming up to the crowd. He's trying to see round people or over people, but he just can't see because he has a problem. He's short. And being short is a problem. I'm married to a, a short person. A few weeks ago, uh, Carol came home from the supermarket absolutely elated because for the first time in her life, someone, it was actually a little old lady, had asked her if she'd be able to get something down from a shelf that was too high for her. And Carol was thrilled to be able to do this for her. No such luck for Zacchaeus. He realized he was never gonna see Jesus so he runs ahead. He finds a tree, uh, not just a lelandi, but a massive sycamore tree, and he climbs it and he waits. So scene two, Jesus is walking along, sees Zacchaeus up the tree and immediately calls out to him and says, Zacchaeus, I must stay in your house today, come down. So Zacchaeus has a decision to make. It's either yes or no. And uh, Luke, the writer, tells us that Zacchaeus welcomed him gladly. But an interesting thing then happens. So Jesus and Zacchaeus go off. But the interesting thing happens with the crowd. So that's the ordinary people, but the religious people as well. They say, Jesus, going to the home of a sinner. Tut, tut. It's, um, it's easy for us now to see the similarities between this story and the story of the two sons. Zacchaeus is the bad one, the runaway son equivalent, who's done everything wrong. Jesus plays the role of the loving father who welcomes Zacchaeus, even though he knows all about the wrong he's done. And then of course, the crowd play the older brother disapproving of the bad one among them. So scene three happens in Zacchaeus's house. He's put on a fine meal for Jesus and for his friends, probably some dodgy friends. Um, and their surroundings are luxurious. There's vases and artwork and fine furniture. I don't know whether Ikea counts. And there's servants. But during the meal, during the time with Jesus, something happens to Zacchaeus and he is transformed. So there comes a moment when Zacchaeus stands and says, look, Lord, I give you half of all. I, ha I give half of all I have to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone, I will give them back four times the amount that I've stolen from them. And you can imagine Jesus at the table, a big grin on his face as he says, today salvation has come to this house. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. The fact is, God accepts us as we are. 
But now here's the thing. Jesus continues to say to people, to you, to me, to everyone, I must stay in your house today. He invites himself in if we're willing to let him. And that's really good news for us just at the moment, because some of us might be feeling like our homes are more like a prison. Some of us are indefinitely staying at home uh, into the weeks, even months ahead. And others of us are allowed out, but only under very certain strict circumstances. The very house that you might feel trapped in, Jesus says, I must stay in your house today. And I don't think that this is just a metaphor for our hearts. I think this really means Jesus wants to come into our homes. And we're going to be under a lot of difficulties and pressures in the weeks ahead, aren't we? Uh, families, challenges looking after the kids who can't be at school. Um, relationships under pressure or tension. Um, family issues. Financial worries. Job, job concerns. Is my job still going to be there? And then there's the sadness of not meeting um, family members. So kids not seeing uh, their elderly relatives and grandparents not seeing their grandchildren. And maybe some of us are going to feel quite lonely and isolated. And then in particular, fear. Fear and anxiety. Um, am I going to have my food? Uh, can I get my medicines? And maybe most of all, am I going to get COVID? And Will I be OK if I do? Um, I got this uh, WhatsApp message from a dear friend in Uganda uh, reaching out to me in, in our time of need, which is ironic because so often we reach out to them. Psalm 91, and many of you I know will have been reading this, but it says here, Psalm 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. There's a real challenge here to decide whether we're going to um, choose faith over fear. And I'd really recommend if you get the chance, look at uh, Nicky Gumbel's done some YouTube uh, talks about faith over fear. But the fact of the matter is we're not alone in this because Jesus says, today I must stay with you in your home. And Jesus doesn't care if we're a sinner or we think we're a sinner or we think we're a saint, whether we think we're a runaway son or an older brother. He just says, today I must stay with you at your house. There's another great verse I've been reminded of. Um, at the uh, last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, Revelation 3, verse 20, Jesus' words, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will go in and eat with him and he with me. There's a choice there. We can choose to allow Jesus to stay with us in our home. But if we do, he promises to be with us in our homes in a time of crisis. And whatever, well, none of us knows what's ahead in the next few weeks, but whatever is, Jesus promises to be there with us. I don't know about you, but uh, last Sunday there was a, a call to prayer for the nation. And at seven o'clock we were invited to light a candle. So uh, I did that. I put it in the window on our landing. And I just felt as I lit the candle, I just, without anybody knowing or seeing, I just kneeled down and I prayed to God for, for you, for our church, for our community, for our nation. And it just felt like a very holy moment when I really sensed Jesus coming into our home in a, in a different way. And there's no doubt there'll be difficult days ahead but we don't face them alone because Jesus says, I come to seek and to save that which was lost. And he does it by becoming nothing himself, by suffering for you and for me on the cross. 
He meets us somehow. He meets us in our suffering and in our difficulty. And he travels with us through those things because he himself has suffered. So he wants to come to our homes to be alongside us, to be our friend, to guide us through whatever these dark days bring. I want to finish with one more verse that uh, the Apostle Paul wrote. Paul was a man that knew uh, lots of suffering and dark days as well. But he spoke some lovely words which encourage us. They remind us that Jesus gives us power by the Holy Spirit to have hope in him and not to be downcast or in fear. So Romans 15 verse 13 says, May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So maybe on all of our behalf, I can just pray now. So let me pray for, for you uh, and for all of us. Heavenly Father, we pray that we may be like Zacchaeus in seeking after you and help us to respond gladly as he did to your invitation to stay with us in our homes. And we pray that we would know your presence now. Come by your spirit, we pray, to give us hope, to replace our fears with faith. And give us the courage that comes from knowing that Lord Jesus, you are by our sides, even now, as we pray. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you for being with this part of our service. Um, Carol and I have decided that we're going to light that candle every Sunday at 7pm and we'll be praying for you and, and you know, for the whole uh, community and situation. So if you if that helps, do that at home as long as you don't set light to anything. And um, now by the wonders of technology, I think you are going to find yourself suddenly transported to Caroline's home where she's going to lead us in some prayers. Goodbye from us. Hello, it's good to be able to share this short prayer time with you. We are living in extraordinarily challenging circumstances and it's natural to feel concerned about what the future may hold for ourselves, for those we love, for our country, for other parts of the world. Trevor encouraged us to choose faith over fear and invite Jesus who understands our humanity, our frailty, into our homes anew. An Archbishop of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Christoph Munizira, who was martyred in 1996, said, There are things that can only be seen by eyes that have cried. As we wrestle with the suffering we are aware of in many parts of the world, as we wrestle with our own difficult circumstances, whatever they may be, may we be aware of the compassion of Christ. May we have a deeper sense of his love for every one of us. And may we have a hope based on our faith in God that will endure. We are going to pray in three sections for our world, for our community and for ourselves. And at the end, I invite you to join in with saying the Lord's Prayer together if you would like to in your homes. Dear Lord, we lift to you all the areas of the world affected by the coronavirus. Where there is overwhelming infection, we pray for healing and protection, for provision of medical needs, and for stamina, wisdom and safety 
for all involved in caring for the sick and vulnerable. We thank you for all those who are on the front line, some putting their personal safety at risk to meet the needs of others. Please look after them. In areas yet to be infected by this pandemic, we pray for protection. For those working on the research to find treatments and vaccines, please guide them and may positive steps forward be made very soon. For those making decisions about how to contain the pandemic and how to care for areas now in lockdown, please give them discernment and great wisdom. We pray for our own country, for those who are leading and guiding our government at this time, shaping national policy and making economic decisions that will have far-reaching consequences in the future. Please give them the extraordinary wisdom they need in this ever-changing situation. In Jesus' name, Amen. Dear Lord, we pray for our community, for those who are unwell, that they would sense your presence with them and would know your healing and your comfort. We pray for the vulnerable and the fearful, that they would sense your peace. We pray for those with difficult home situations that make staying in particularly challenging. Please bring hope and resolution where there is unrest. Help us to reach them with your love. Thank you for the way the Nailsy community has come together. For those running the Nailsy COVID-19 support group and for the many volunteers involved. Please keep them safe and may they be a blessing to many. In Jesus' name, Amen. Dear Lord, we pray for our church family in our individual homes, some on their own, some with others, some in self-isolation, some doing essential business only. May we all continue to keep you at the centre of our homes and help us to find a way to bridge the walls of our necessary physical separation. We ask that our communication with each other would be faithful, our care would be ongoing, and that our friendships would grow deeper, even though we cannot meet face to face. Help us to develop new ways of walking alongside each other, new ways of sharing our hearts with each other, new ways of encouraging each other. So in the waiting and in the challenges ahead, we would not feel alone. And may our prayers join us together and our sense of community grow, both within the church and with others we have contact with. So when we can meet again, we will find that a deeper bond of love, friendship and respect for all has been forged in these difficulties. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please join in at home if you'd like to as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Thank you for joining us for this video. I really hope it's encouraged you in heart and soul and in your faith. Um, we do hope that you will keep in touch. If there's any need, please let us know. We'd love to help and make sure that no one is suffering. And I guess I just return to the advice that I started with, that you would keep safe, keep connected and keep praying. May God bless you.